first thing what I say if you say you follow what I say then you stick with what I say I was in Ramana Ashram and I was in, in, the, in the meditation room and this list of wrong things I've done like kept on coming up in, in my head like you, you, can, you cannot be perfect being because you've done this and that and this and this and this um, Actually, it wasn't even that long of a list, you know, it wasn't even such a long list. But there was a moment that I just felt, just let it all come, everything, just everything, everything. Like I followed your instruction just to, okay, all of this, and there was just, I, I was okay about it somehow, there was a sense, okay. And so you want to ask a question about something? No, I guess it just, I don't know you want to try why I'm talking. I, <sighs> if you had one sentence to make, what you would say? There is a question because it was seen that all the uh, it was seen very clearly this play of following the following the mind, you know, being in this state of I am and presence, and then constantly like going back, going back, going back, and then no, and then. And then I felt. What, does it really matter? Does it really matter to, to drop in this thing all the time? Drop in what thing? Does it really matter what, if these things come? Does it really matter that if because these things come, no. you have Again, to go to them? Again, well, first thing, what I say, if you say you follow what I say, then you stick with what I say. Because if I say, stay only as that presence, then uh, y you are there and many visitors are going to come, they will come. But your instruction is just stay, stay as the Self, stay as that uh, observer. Or just stay in the observing, don't go anything, don't try and change something or repair something or get anywhere, just stay there. And then I mean, the, mind, the mind wants something more, like, you know, okay, now I stay there, so after that, what should I, no, no, just stay there. Yes, but if I keep staying, no, just stay. You see, like this, that's all. And watch the questions are being sh pushed up, pushed up, pushed up, and then they just fade, they have no power. Because if you believe they have something to bring you, then you keep on ke keeping a relationship with them, because you are believing them into existence, so they keep coming. You only stay only as that space you have felt. The sense I am, I refer to as the godly principle, the presence of consciousness, it's there. Your parents didn't give it to you, it came. In this body it's there. And it can go with the vital force and with attention and enter into a kind of relationship with thought and so on. And it can stay it can stay with itself, but it seems the play of existence is that it must first go out a bit and in the playground of manyness and differentness and you and me and this and that and heaven and hell and life and death and king and queen and right and wrong and all of this and then somehow that's it. And then heaven and hell and right and wrong and then that and you and me and then and then and when and what well, uh, and it's okay now with it. It's okay. It's okay. 
before heaven and hell and right and wrong and you and me and this and that and that and that and that. And now it's okay. And then, and then, The whole of spirituality in ten seconds. As the consciousness is self-aware, it finds immense joy, the joy of being. It can even enjoy the joy of becoming, knowing that is just a transient play. It's not caught up in the traffic of uh, mistaken identity anymore. It's not holding something privately hidden, nothing concealed, no need. There is no more 101 things. It stopped counting. Though counting may happen, it is not the counter. And it is supremely happy. It does not need to forecast or predict. It simply is. And some call this the embodiment of the Supreme. That even in this body, you have come home. Uh, some say that uh, uh, a human form is a most auspicious incarnation, because in this form consciousness can contemplate itself. It is not so easy if you are a donkey, okay, or a worm, or a mosquito. In the human body, consciousness is also in those forms, but in the human form it can have satsang. It can contemplate subtle truth. It can reflect upon its original nature. And it can merge again uh, the mind into the heart. And yet, it is the most challenging also expression of consciousness, it can seem. That it say that when in the human being the consciousness remembers itself, then they say, all the heavenly beings, they are happy. They want to come and be in the presence of that one. Because it is not easy in this form, because so sophisticated is the consciousness to diversify itself, you see, and then to get lost somehow in all the veins of manifestation, and so to return again to unassociated consciousness. It's rare. So even the impulse, the pull towards coming home is called auspicious. Much less the recognition and the conscience abiding in itself of consciousness. And therefore it says, of all the beings, all the beings are in satsang. They are in the stream of satsang. Even the mosquito is in the stream. Because the true evolution of uh, sentient beings is an evolution to uh, emptiness, to consciousness, not to somethingness. You see, this is the pull. And it can take a very long time in this movement, 
and then to find something that comes back simply to here. And who does not reject the world? Who does not judge the world? Hmm. But looks upon the world with kindness. Uh, this one he says, uh, as uncovered the havaduta in the heart. Spirituality in ten seconds. <laughs> 